Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. With a rare look inside the West Point Mint's massive gold vaults and coin operations. This was sent to me by Donald in New Mexico, and I'll post a link to this article in the description below because there's a video that I'm not going to play here, but I think it's worth watching because I think this will probably put some, well, maybe or maybe not, put some naysayers to rest about whether or not the United States Mint has uh, the gold that it says it has in its reserves because the West Point Mint holds a lot of gold and it's only second to Fort Knox in its gold holdings. About an hour and a half drives north of New York City lies a treasure of the gold kind, but it's not the one that you can go and find because you really can't get anywhere near it because it belongs to the United States Treasury. And of course, we know that because it belongs to the United States Treasury, really, it belongs to us because the Treasury is paid by us. Nearly a quarter of the U.S. government's gold sits beneath a windowless building on the campus of West Point. And here you see an image of the bars. And uh, you can also see here in this image gallery uh, some of the coins that were minted at West Point. I think the Proof Buffalo gold coin with a $50 denomination. And the new West Point mint circulated quarters that you can only find and change um, you know, at a bank or within circulation. And there is the vaults of the gold there, which you can see with the American flag behind it. And there's another view of the gold. And here is someone inspecting. I think this guy is a, uh, uh, I think a supervisor, a press supervisor there. Fascinating indeed. We've got approximately 54 million ounces here that we store, which is about 22% of the nation's gold, Ella McCollum says from her office. She's a superintendent of the West Point Mint, a facility that was built the same year as Fort Knox and originally housed the nation's silver. Most of that silver has been sold off and you may remember the stories about that back the strategic stockpiles of, of the United States mint silver being sold off. <clears throat> the latest Treasury Department numbers show that West Point is second only to Fort Knox in the amount of government gold in its vaults. It's stored as bullion, big heavy bricks of solid gold and silver. In fact, they're about 27 pounds, although in the video, He's saying that between 28 and 29 pounds, but I think the official weight is 27 pounds for them. <clears throat> Fox 5 New York was granted rare access, supervised, of course, to one of the highly secure vaults. Officials had to cut a numbered seal to open it. You know, you think of this as the second uh, largest holding of the nation's gold, and it's as secure as Fort Knox. Why can't they allow media into um, Fort Knox. You know, I'm sure it would be even more secure, but I think there's probably ways to be able to do it to allow some access. But this is quite interesting. We weren't allowed to shoot a new video of the security process at the West Point Mint, but you will see in the video that they do show the gold. And uh, in the one vault, there were 2,600 bars of gold bullion. At today's market value, each bar is worth about $500,000. That means that in one vault, there is $1.3 billion worth of gold. And that's not counting the silver. That might be a couple of drops towards our national debt to pay it off, but not much more than that. All the security that's required here to secure these assets, and McCollum says, uh, She's been here a long time, and they haven't lost anything. They don't take any chances, even employing assayers who use sophisticated chemical processes, including putting the gold in a 900 degrees Celsius furnace to burn it down to the raw elements. And I think that's great and wonderful that they do that, but they should 
show those reports and make those reports public as should Fort Knox. And that's one of the criticisms and why people are doubting why Fort Knox doesn't have the gold. It's all to make sure that the gold they acquire is actually gold. Now, the West Point Mint uses uh, the gold, the assayed gold, obviously for striking coins. And those gold coins, they know have got to be pure and have the full faith and credit of the United States government. And of course, private individuals and entities can have it tested as well. So we know that gold is real. It's my job to certify to the American public that it's 99.9% .9 pure gold, Chief Assayer Jeanette Grogan says, but storing and protecting the Treasury's gold isn't all that happens at the West Point. You know how I mentioned you can't go find the treasure that's stored here? Well, thanks to a new program starting this month, it might find you. They're referring to it as the Treasure Coin Hunt. And you know, I posted a video about this earlier. It's a national nationwide program hoping to excite both old and new coin collectors. At first glance it, looks, glance, it looks just like a normal quarter, but there's something there that's never been on a circulating coin in the Mint's 227-year history. A little W mint mark known, um, a little W mark known as a mint mark. W is for West Point, and throughout 2019, West Point will strike a total of 10 million circulating quarters and five different America the Beautiful styles. Then we mixed in with roughly two billion normal quarters from the mints from Denver and Philadelphia. Number crunchers take notes. That means only about 0.5% of all new quarters in 2019 will bear the West Point mint mark. And the only way to get one is to check your pockets. For anybody who collects coins, to find this is a real prize. And you know, I do, do agree with that for those who are actual coin collectors, but to, in my view, this doesn't excite new collectors. I think if you add a privy mark or some, something a little bit different on it, or an actual different quarter itself that has a different design on the back, specific to maybe the West Point or something else uh, involving that, that, I think that would really make it all the more special. Collectibles are really the bread and butter of the West Point men itself. They strike coins and bullion made of precious metals, hence all the gold, and that's what's known as numismatic or rare collectible coins. Coins like the American Buffalo, the 24 karat one ounce pure gold proof coin, which is by the way four nines fine gold, and it's on sale for about 1600 bucks, way high over spot price, but it's a collector coin. And uh, it's also striking the Apollo 11 50th anniversary gold coin, which is approved by Congress. And... Um, all, and struck the West Point onto a coin that's 90% gold and 6% silver and the rest copper. For some, coins will always be just coins. The change in your pocket in these days doesn't get you much. But to the folks here, it's just more than a laundromat money. Uh, it's the story of America and telling future generations about our treasured past can be as good as gold. And I do agree with that. And that is, the why, I think, one reason why we do enjoy collecting coins. But I think the larger story here, I think, is the uh, the gold that's stored there. In this video, you really will see um, quite a fascinating look uh, at unprecedented access to the the vaults there, and you can see the gold in there. And he holds it up, and when he's holding it up, you know, he says, "Well, this is very heavy, much heavier." And uh, then he thought, and, you know, obviously there's the thing, well, it's it's tungsten filled, you know, that's the, the thing. But, you know, are they assayed? Are these bars assayed? Um, are they vetted? Who knows? The fact is we can see them there. I believe they're real. And especially the ones that are used. I mean, you know, in the, you know, two mint coins. And if, they, if this chief assayer does have these reports and proof that they are and how they test this gold. I believe it is. I think it just needs to be translated to the nation's largest store of gold, and that is Fort Knox. There needs to be a bit more transparency in that regard, in my view. But this is an example, I think, of what could be in the fact that this local Fox News station brought it to light and makes a story about it, I think is great news to help spread the message of gold and silver and precious metals around for Americans. Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching. 
and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.